Today I'm gonna to be trying a little something different here to try to uh, help with the algae or try to control the algae in my pond, which is at this point uh, a little over a year old since I uh, built it. So I had been using or have been using the uh, this algae fix here from API and I've been dosing it uh, per the recommended doses on here. And that was basically treating it with about 30 milliliters of this stuff. I think it was like every other day uh, or every three days, I don't remember, whatever this was saying on here. I, I haven't been doing that because, uh, or lately anyways, because this hasn't been working. Now, initially when I put it in the pond, uh, I think it was actually last year, last summer, um, it seemed to work for the first couple times and then it just stopped working at all to get rid of the hair and the string algae. And I'll be showing that here in a minute, uh, what it looks like now anyways. But I was dosing it to where I believe it was uh, slightly underdosing. I don't know the exact amount of gallons that I have in my pond. I've sort of measured and uh, calculated in an approximation of what it might be and then just kind of uh, underdosed it because I don't want to overdose it too much. Well, recently in uh, this spring, I had to you know, I had to get all the algae out of the pond because there was there was so much built up in there. And I started using this again, and it wasn't doing anything. As a matter of fact, I would put this in, and then a day or two later, there, there would be even more algae. So it wasn't working. So what I decided to do was start dosing it as if my pond was 600 gallons, and that was giving this uh, giving my pond about 60 milliliters of this stuff, and that worked. Uh, I really don't know if that's overdosing it or not, but it did sort of get rid of the algae. Today, I'm gonna to be trying something different. This is 12% hydrogen peroxide. Uh, I got the stuff on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description, uh, which will be an affiliate link. But I did try this, a little bit of this, uh, a smaller dose of this in the pond after I had put this in here the last time. I know this worked because the next day there was definitely less algae and less, uh, it was less green on the rocks. The, the water's not green, but the, the rocks and everything have algae, so they were, they were less green. Uh, and then I dosed it with the peroxide on, I would say, an underdose, and it seemed to uh, elongate the period that this worked for. So normally when I put this in, in, a, in probably a week later, it's, it'll almost be back to where it was before if I don't dose it again. After I dosed this and put the hydrogen peroxide in, it, this seemed to uh, make it last longer. I don't think I've done anything to the pond in the past at least two weeks now since I've dosed it with this. And then after I did that, I did this, which I think it was, I think it was a day or two later after is when I did this. Um, so I'm gonna go over how much I'm going to use with this real quick, and then I'm gonna put it in the pond and then we'll come back after a day or two or however long it takes and we'll look at the pond. So to dose 600 gallons of water with the 12% hydrogen peroxide, uh, it's gonna be about three quarters of a cup to mix into the pond. And that's actually a starting point. I could actually use more, uh, but we're gonna use this as a starting point. This is the recommended amount if you look this up anywhere. If it doesn't work well enough, we'll try a little bit more. But as of right now, uh, for this little experiment here, we're gonna just use this much. There's my pond there, and here's my cup of hydrogen peroxide. I do gotta warn you, if you've never used a stronger hydrogen peroxide other than the stuff that's meant to go on your skin, uh, this strength is pretty potent. You don't wanna get this on your skin. Uh, it'll cause, uh, it could cause irritations and uh, burns, basically. It, it's uh, good to use gloves, although I am not using gloves. Don't do what I do. Just, if you're going to do this, just be really careful if you're not gonna wear gloves. Uh, and, and definitely don't splash it in your eyes. So anyways, I'm gonna put it in the pond there, and you can see down right where the tip of this cup is, right where my intake bay is, right there. I'm gonna put it right down in there where it sucks the water in, and then goes through the pipe, goes all the way around up there, and goes comes out into the bog up there on the top part. Uh, so it's gonna mix with the water a little bit before it actually flows down and around the waterfall. So that's important because you don't wanna be dumping this in the pond near your fish or any other wildlife while it's still in a concentrated form uh, that could definitely hurt your uh, wildlife. So that's where I'll be putting it. I didn't wanna uh, talk outside because it's a little too noisy. So 
I'll just go out there and show you real quick a uh, close-up of what the algae looks like. All right, so that's what it looks like, and we'll come back in a couple days here and see what happens. All right, it's been a week since I put the peroxide in the water, and I can't really say that it's done a lot, but it, it has worked, and I'll explain this here. Um, typically, when I put any kind of algicide or the peroxide in the water, it's gonna be kind of hard to see with the reflections of the sky on there, but um, over here in the intake bay where the uh, filter cups are, Normally, if the algae starts to disintegrate from it dying off, I will see a buildup here on the sponges. And I have not seen a lot of that. There's a little bit, but nothing significant. Um, as far as the way the algae looks, well, the algae doesn't look healthy at all. It's not a very green color. It's like a, a browny yellow kind of a color. And you see these little, like, not, I guess I would call them nodules. Um, kind of all over where it's like slowly like dying back and shriveling up and, and forming these like little denser spots. Um, so it's, if anything, it's actually kind of kept it from spreading because this week has been very warm and uh, it's been receiving a lot of sun every day. And normally in these conditions, I would start to see the algae get worse and rapidly spread. I would see it over there where it starts to form bunches and um, what you would call pond sludge, it would form over there. That happens pretty quickly. And normally I'd have to clean it out every day, almost, because it would just be in an abundance and it just it would grow so fast. I would even see over here, in this little cove, where the waterfall is, I would start seeing strings everywhere and I'm not seeing any of that. Um, so it, it is working. It, it is stopping it from actually getting worse or spreading. And, and the amount that I put in there is actually has re reduced the, the growth and kind of shrunk it back. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to double the dose uh, and we'll see if we can get rid of the rest of it here and see if it makes an improvement in that. I don't necessarily need to do that at this point because it's sort of been, it's keeping in check, but just for the sake of this little test here, I'm gonna double the dose and see what happens. All right, last time we put in three quarters of a cup. So this time we're gonna be putting in a cup and a half I'm sorry, I'm American. I don't use a metric system for, well, at least not for that many things. So it's filled up to a cup and a half here, 12 ounces, right about there. It is quite a bit to double something like that. Um, but this is not going to hurt the fish or the wildlife. It's definitely not gonna hurt the plants. It's, it's only gonna help the plants. Um, the only thing that's, that could happen with this that could be t potentially be a bad thing is a bacterial crash in the pond. All the denitrifying bacteria in the pond could possibly die, in the, especially in the biofilter in the bog area, and cause uh, ammonia spikes there after that. Uh, but just for the sake of doing this, I'm just gonna double the dose and see what happens, and then we'll go from there. I'm, I'm not really overly concerned about an ammonia spike because mostly what I have in there is a goldfish and they really can tolerate quite a bit of ammonia in the water column. All right, it has been uh, three days since I have added the double dose of peroxide to the pond and it is definitely working. Um, I'm not really seeing hardly any, well, I'm not seeing any additional algae and on top of that, all the algae that uh, has been here is basically disintegrating. I mean, the rocks here, there was quite a bit more before, and now it's all the stuff that's there is basically just disintegrating and sort of just disappearing. Probably mostly just slowly falling down into the into the pit there. Maybe the fish are eating it too. But I can clearly see there's there's hardly any left over there, um, and it's just it seems to me like most of the stuff that's left over that hasn't been touched a whole lot is actually down below the thermocline there where it's colder 
and where there's less water circulation. Most of the stuff that's up here on the surface, though, has mostly disappeared. And it's not only disappearing, it's just it's keeping any new stuff from forming, it seems like. Fish are completely fine. There's tons of baby fish in there, baby goldfish. Um, and I, I can't really see any negative effects. Obviously, the plants would never be affected. Uh, I have not seen in the intake bay here, there's really not a whole lot of uh, algae particulate getting stuck in the uh, sponges up here. To where normally when I would be adding the algicide, the regular algicide, I would see stuff break off and it would end up in these filters. I had to clean it out every day. So it seems like the peroxide in, in that case is actually working better. There is one downside to this that I uh, probably, I'm not sure if I need to worry about, but I feel like I need to say. So if the algae is not really being manually, actually physically removed from the water, when it disintegrates, it just breaks down into the, the elements that it originally absorbed from the water column, and then it goes back into the water column. So by doing this, there's a possibility that it may cause a, a, another algae bloom, bloom later on unless you continue to use peroxide. But what it does do is it gets rid of a lot of the algae, which is sucking up a lot of Newton a lot of nutrients from the water column, and it is allowing more plants like this, like this watercress here, to grow more because it's not feeding as much nutrients. There's more nutrients for the plants to grow that you want, and all these little roots and everything hanging down in the water can then absorb uh, the excess nutrients out of the water column and then have less algae growth later on. So there is that. I would say that based on the results I've seen here, uh, I think it's safe to say that using about um, one cup per 100 gallons of water is probably safe to use for your pond.